If you're new to R, you've probably encountered the term tidyverse across lots of different online tutorials, videos, books, etc. And all tidyverse is, is a bundle of packages that aim to solve some of the pain points of working with R. In this guide, I'm going to highlight some of the key features of the tidyverse packages and compare it to base R. And when I say base R, I'm just talking about R out of the box. In other words, the default functionality of R before you add any additional packages, we're going to compare that functionality with tidyverse and look at the pros and cons of both. So jumping right in, let's talk about getting set up with tidyverse. Here I have a list of the eight core packages that come with tidyverse. You can see they're all data science focused. So working with data, visualizing data, manipulating data, etc. Take a moment to skim through this list just to familiarize yourself with what's available. And then to get these packages installed, we're just going to run the command install.packages tidyverse. So let me go over to R Studio and into my R console, I'm going to run that command. And now that those packages are installed, I can reference them as needed in my script. So we could use the library command. And if I want access to any of the tidyverse packages, I could just simply pull in the entire tidyverse library. But generally speaking, it's better to be more selective and just pull in the packages we plan on using. So for example, ggplot2, and maybe I'll use uh, dplyr in here as well. And that's just going to be more efficient. No sense loading the entire collection of packages when we only need one or two. So now that we have access to tidyverse, let's get into some of the advantages that it gives us over base R. And the first is that generally speaking, you're going to find the code is more intuitive. For an example of this, let's go back to the notes that accompany this video and scroll down. I'm going to grab this line of code that's doing some basic data filtering, and it's using just base R functionality to do that. So this is referencing MT cars. This is a built-in data set that comes with R, it's short for motor trend cars. And let's just take a moment to familiarize ourselves with that data. So I'm going to pull this up in the viewer. So you can see we have a list of cars, their MPGs, number of cylinders, horsepower, etc. And in this line of code, using Dispace R, we are filtering down to just cars that have a miles per gallon greater than 20. And specifically, we're extracting just the columns MPG and horsepower. And let me show you what that looks like. So I just loaded this results data set. Let's pull this up. All right, so these are the cars with MPG greater than 20. And again, we're getting just the miles per gallon and horsepower uh, columns from it. And this is using just base R functionality. So we're seeing subsetting with the square brackets where after our data set of MT cars, we're going to indicate the rows we're interested in. So we're interested in just rows where MPG is greater than 20. And then these are the columns that we're interested in. And we specify that via a vector of the two column names that we want. All right, now if you have a basic understanding of R, that should make sense. It's not too complicated, but let's compare this to how we would do this in tidyverse. And specifically, we are going to be using the dplyr package here. dplyr provides a bunch of functionality for manipulating and filtering data. And once again, let me go to the notes for the code example for this. So this is the same operation that we're seeing here with the base R code, but now we're using the tidyverse dplyr package. And what we can see is we're referencing our empty cars data set again. And then we're going to be piping that data set to a function that comes with dplyr called filter. And we're simply saying we want cars where MPG is greater than 20. And then we're going to take the result of that and pipe it to this other function called select, where we're going to indicate the column names that we want. All right, now I'm going to talk about these pipe characters in a moment. But broadly speaking, I just want you to look at these two lines of code and notice which is more intuitive or expressive. When we say that code is expressive, we mean it almost reads like plain English, such that imagine you had no R experience and you were asked to interpret what these two sections of code are doing. I think you would find the dplyr version just it makes more sense because we're starting with the data and then we're following that up with almost a set of instructions of what we're doing using these very uh, common terms, things like filter and select that just intuitively make sense. Whereas the R version, it's just more cryptic. There's uh, an understanding we need to have for how subsetting and square brackets work, how the extraction character works. It doesn't read in a logical flow like the dplyr code does. So this is a common theme you're going to see in on all of the tidyverse packages is just this emphasis on more intuitive and expressive code. Now, just as a quick footnote, the name dplyr, it's short for data plier. And plier is just a play on the actual tool pliers with this idea of pliers are a pretty useful universal tool. And what we're getting with dplyr is a bunch of useful and universal tools for manipulating data. Zooming in on this dplyr example, I want to look at the pipe operator. 
So that's going to be this operator represented by the percent sign, greater than sign, percent sign. This is something you're going to see used throughout tidyverse packages and code you write with tidyverse packages. And what it does is it takes whatever's to the left of the operator, in this case that's our data empty cars, and it passes it as the first argument to whatever function that follows. And then as you can see, we could chain this. So we see the pipe operator again, and we're gonna take the results of what we get from filter, and we're gonna pipe that to the select function. To appreciate how the pipe operator makes our code more intuitive, let's rewrite this. We're still gonna be using dplyr's filter and select functions, but we're just gonna call them in a more traditional way without using the pipe operator. So I'll set up another results object. We'll invoke filter. And then because we're not piping our data into filter, we have to indicate what data we want to filter. Well, in this case, what we want to actually be filtering is the results of selecting just MPG and horsepower from MT cars. So I'm going to copy that, pass that as the first argument to filter. Um, for select, I have to tell it what we're selecting from. So I have to add MT cars here. And then the second argument, right, this is the first argument for filter. The second argument is going to be uh, what our filter is. So it's going to be MPG greater than 20. And just to double check my work, I do want to run both of these examples, make sure we're getting the same results. Uh, so let me first make sure the dplyr package is actually loaded. And then we'll run this bit of code. And let's check our results. So we're getting just cars with MPG greater than 20. We're getting both the MPG and horsepower columns. And then let's do this uh, second example without pipes load that again and just confirm we're seeing the same thing. So once again, I just want you to take a look at these two different approaches and notice how this is more intuitive. This approach where we're passing the data to our function calls, you have to sort of read it inside out, right? You have to start by looking at what the most interior function is. In this case, that's a select. You have to wrap your brain around what that's giving you to understand that that's what's going to be passed to filter. Whereas this approach where we just pipe the results to each subsequent function just is more intuitive. And again, it reads almost like a step-by-step -step set of instructions. So the pipe operator, very useful for making code easier to read. And just a quick tip, if you're working in RStudio and you wanna quickly generate the pipe operator, you could of course type out the individual characters or on a Mac, if you hold down Command-Shift-M, that'll insert it for you. Or on Windows, that would be uh, Control-Shift-M. Moving on, on our journey of highlighting some of the useful features of Tidyverse, let's talk about tibbles. Tibbles are something we get with the tibble package that comes with Tidyverse. And they're basically just an enhanced version of ours data frame structure. The name tibble is just a play on the word table because like data frames, they present data in a table-like structure where we have rows and columns and you create them very similarly to how you create data frames. So just as an example, let's create an object called my data. And instead of invoking ours data frame function, we're gonna invoke the tibble function. And then we can pass it some key value pairs for our rows and columns. So I'll just work out an example for this. And then just for comparison, let's duplicate that as a data frame. So we're gonna call this my data two, and this time we will create it with the data frame uh, function that R gives us. And now the first feature I wanna highlight of tibbles over data frames is just their print functionality. So if we print our tibble and also print our data frame, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. So let me run all of this code. And here's the output of our tibble. And here's the output of our data frame. And what you can see is the output of the tibble is just a little bit nicer. We see a summary of what we're working with. We've got a two by two tibble. We could see the data types used for each of our columns. We see row numbers and you'll notice things like the data types and row numbers, all this meta information we get is grayed out just so we can distinguish between that and the actual data within our tibble. Whereas the data frame is just a pretty plain output. We don't get that extra meta information. It's just not as clear. So it's not a dramatic difference, but definitely a nice uh, feature of tibbles. Um, another feature of tibbles versus data frames is they're a little bit more disciplined. For example, let's say from this data, we tried to extract some information that didn't exist. If we do that with a data frame, let's say we try to get birth year. With the data frame, it's just gonna return null because that information doesn't exist. But if we do the same thing with a tibble, we get a nice clear warning message telling us that our column doesn't exist. And so uh, you can imagine how that can help you out and help you avoid unknown bugs as you were to continue to work with uh, whatever you're doing in your code. 
And this is a general theme you're going to see in a lot of the packages in Tidyverse is it tends to be stricter or more disciplined, which uh, will help you out in the long run. The final feature I'll highlight about tibbles is just that it's very easy if you have existing data frames to convert them to tibbles. And just as an example, let's take our empty cars data. Let's create a tibble version of it. We're going to make this conversion using the as tibble function. We'll pass it empty cars. And then let's just go ahead and print that out. And there's our nice tidy output with our meta information. And you can see it also limited it to just 10 rows, which is nice because if you're dealing with very large data frames and you print them out, it tends to spam your console where here we're just getting uh, essentially a peek at the data. Now there's lots more we could say about tibbles and really all of the packages within the tidyverse. The point of this video is just to give you a taste of the general underlying theme of Tidyverse, which is just to make R better, to make it more convenient to work with, and to make it more intuitive to work with. And speaking to all those points, you might be wondering, once I start working with Tidyverse, does that mean I'm never going to work with base R? And the answer to that question is absolutely not, because Tidyverse is really just a layer that you add on to base R, right? Base R is the foundation upon which you're building on. And at the end of the day, your code is really going to be a hybrid of the two different styles. And you're going to encounter lots of code on the internet from colleagues where they might not be using Tidyverse. So it's going to be important to understand that base R approach to things as well. The other point to highlight is that there's pros and cons to both base R and Tidyverse. And I've listed them here in the notes. And I think the most important difference to be aware of is sometimes there's a performance difference uh, for really process intensive operations. Sometimes using base R functionality is going to be more efficient than Tidyverse. Uh, oftentimes for a lot of the things we're doing, the difference is going to be negligible and the, the convenience we're going to get with Tidyverse from the programming perspective is going to outweigh any sort of performance difference. But if you're dealing with very large data sets and performance is of concern, definitely something to be aware of as you're uh, choosing which tools to use for the job.